Let's make sure it is working here. All right. Hey everyone. Ryan here from eBike Escape and just going to check the camera quick. All right, today we are unboxing the Ride One Up Rideal affordable electric bike. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact and you're looking to purchase one of these, please check out the link in the description. It helps us uh, continue to do reviews like this one. I will be doing a full review on this and uh, keeps us working with uh, both Aerial Rider and other electric bike companies. And I know this is in the middle of the day for most people, but I wanted to get this unboxed uh, so I could get to testing and my evenings were a little bit busy. So uh, if you do have any questions as we're going through this, let me know in the comments. Uh, happy to answer anything uh, about this bike, about any of the Aerial Rider uh, e-bikes. If you're not familiar with my channel, we do a bunch of e-bike reviews. We talk about e-bike accessories. You can check our e-bike accessories list out in the description. We also have a top e-bike brands page. And I also send out a monthly uh, newsletter with some of our latest content and just kind of sharing a little bit more behind the scenes of what's going on. Of course, you can also follow me on social media if you're interested in some of those things. So with that, we have the Aerial Rider Ride Deal. Uh, here today and one of the reasons that I'm super excited about this bike is because of its price point it's right at $1,000 $999 right now and it came out or was released uh, earlier this year and if you haven't been following some of my videos I've really been focusing on a lot of e-bikes around this $1,000 ish price range uh, we reviewed the KBO Hurricane, the Ride One Up Roadster V2, and the Rad Power Bikes Rad Mission. And I also have a lec an electric, L-E-C-T-R-I-C, not electric, electric XP 2.0 on the way. So we'll have a bunch of e-bikes right around this $1,000 price point. Hey, go bike. Thanks for joining me. And uh, yeah, we'll see if anyone else decides to trickle in. But let's, let's crack this thing open. And... Um, I actually had to uh, go through some of the specs a little bit with uh, go on their website because I, you know, it's been a while since I've looked at the specs of this bike, and I have it up on my computer as well. Um, the box arrived in pretty good condition. There's hardly any damage, uh, if any, uh, to the side of the box, so that's always a good sign. And. Um, the bike weight said, or the, the package weight was 77 pounds. Now that's obviously not the bike weight. I will put the full bike weight on in my full review. And uh, let's pull up, see this color. And we got the blue one. There we go. Thanks to my assistant here. Uh-huh. Okay. Woo! I like that blue. Definitely a uh, very similar blue to that of the uh, uh, Area Rider X class. So, all right, I'm gonna get snipping. I always recommend a set of side snips uh, to get all the zip ties off. It's a great, Lavon La Jones says it's a great bike. bike. I got mine about a week ago and did a 40 mile ride Saturday. That's an amazingly comfortable saddle too. too. Oh. Good to know. Uh, that's something we always kind of talk about, and a lot of something that a lot of people upgrade is their saddle. But talking about impressive specs on this bike, of course, I need to test it out for myself. But 750 watt uh, motor, and the battery is a 14 amp hour battery, which is almost unheard of at the thousand dollar price point. So those are two of the um, some of the, the main specs. Um, and it's always good, you know, not everyone can afford an e-bike that's multiple thousands of dollars. So uh, 
it's kind of fun to review this price point just because it's a little bit more accessible uh, to folks and kind of talk a little bit about what you get for the money. Let's see, where do I want to start here? Yep. I think it has both front and rear lights as well. Uh, we'll, we'll see, I guess. Like I said, I, it's been a while since I looked in detail on the specs. There's the uh, 14 amp hour battery. So everything is external on this bike, which uh, can be expected for the, the price point. Um, nothing integrated. But well, here's that saddle. Looks like nice and cool brown something unique. Oh, brown, and I wonder if they actually, um, so it's got a little, uh, it's a Velo saddle. It's actually got a little blue in the back, so I wonder if they, if blue is just standard, or if they match that to the color of the bike. And actually, the Aerial Rider um, logo is actually on the front, too, so that's kind of cool. I'll pop that seat post in. Oh, and size, let's see if I can see this. Um, uh, let's see. 28.6. So, if you want a suspension seat post, there you go. Um, speaking of suspension seat posts, I will be reviewing the Redshift suspension seat post. That's actually on its way, so that'll be a fun accessory. And, um, yeah, it's always fun to review new accessories. So, this must be the rear light. It's the Blaze light, I think this is the one that's actually a little bit brighter um, than some of the ones I've seen. So let's take a look at that. Um, looks like mounts for so the, the rear light mounts uh, here to where the rear rack would otherwise go. So I would imagine you can still put a rear rack on here, something I might look into we'll just have to see try to get all the packaging out of the way um so i think it's a shimano tourney derailleur let's see at least that's what i seem to remember from when i first looked up this bike and yep shimano tourney so the, the other thing that's unique about this bike is it has, I think it's seven speed. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, six speeds. Yep, six speeds, I guess. Um, and so some of the other e-bikes are single speeds at this price point. So something to consider. I mean, I feel like some of those single speed e-bikes are still plenty capable. Of course, when you have a motor, um, you know, it's really nice, but you know, there's different ability levels. So it's good that people have the option, I guess. Um, just going around here on the, um, the chain stay over here, it's got a nice uh, like neoprene chain guard. It's like not something that, you know, it's a small thing, but something that you wouldn't necessarily expect on an e-bike um, at a thousand dollars so that's great okay. let me just make sure of course we have that kickstand here i'm going to go ahead and put that down uh located to the rear um it, it is adjustable i wonder if i can adjust that quick so i can don't have to lean it up. We'll do that maybe in a second here. One, that's one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that on, on a lot of these e-bikes, the uh, the um, the kickstand is adjustable. Let's see if this is the right size. Go ahead and lower that. Let's see if that works. There you go. It's better for now. I'm sure when I get that front tire on, it'll be better too. And
Alright, now it's sitting nicely. Let's uh, crack open this box here. And uh, reflective sidewalls on the tires. I was just looking for a brand. Everything is in uh, black, so it's, if there is a brand listed, it's going to be hard to read. Yes. See, oh, these are so these are CST tires. That's a brand that I first saw on a fat tire bike, um, and I'm sure that a lot of companies are having to switch what kind of tires they're putting on bikes just because of the availability. And again, if you're just joining me, let me know if you have any questions about this bike, about other e-bikes. Uh, happy to happy to answer. Open this box quick. Okay. Got some bolts. It says extra screws. And we have the Welgo, uh, Welgo pedals. Very standard uh, for a bike of this price point. But what is interesting is sometimes I've seen recently uh, companies put uh, plastic pedals, which I do not prefer. In my opinion, if you buy an e-bike with plastic pedals, you should um, think about replacing them. They're just, it's nice to have something that is going to hold up over time. The Welgo pedals are, they're adequate for a lot of people. I'm sure they think they're adequate. Um, I personally like something with a little bit more grip. Of course, you need to watch your, watch your shins at that point as well, but all right, and so yeah, again, you get your front headlight um, integrated. I see the uh, plug-in, so that's great. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, and they include their touch-up paint, which is something that I'm only aware of Aerial Rider that does that. Maybe other companies do. Maybe if you purchase from a bike shop, you can get uh, touch-up paint, but that's cool that Aerial Rider does that. This is their... Uh, Instruction manual, always good to read through this, um, especially if you're not familiar with um, with e-bikes. There's a, a what I like to focus on, especially is related to the battery. Um, companies will tell you um, best practices, like here, always charge your battery in temperature between 50 and 77 degrees. Uh, sometimes they will tell you that you should um, leave the battery plugged in for balancing purposes. Uh, especially for the first few charges. So uh, definitely take out, take a look at your manual. Um, yep. The other cool thing, if you aren't aware, um, is that Aerial Rider has a pretty good community on, um, on Facebook. And so you can ask them questions. Uh, lots of lots of nice members on there to help out. Uh, this is a different uh, charger than I've seen. It actually looks uh, pretty similar to the one on Red Power Bikes, but it's branded Aerial Rider. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Raul asks, "Did you buy it, or did they ship it so you can review it?" So Aerial Rider did ship this to me, uh, so I could review it. And but uh, to caveat that, I mean. When I was looking at uh, e-bike companies, particularly last year, um, when I was kind of starting to review e-bike brands, I really focused on a few brands that I would personally consider purchasing from, and Aerial Rider was one of them. So, you know, I didn't start out with this massive YouTube audience and, and have all these companies uh, reach out to me. A lot of these relationships that I've had with um, various companies are because I reached out to them. I genuinely believe they have a good product and I would personally, I'm personally interested in uh, purchasing it. So very few of the bikes that I uh, review are, you know, I'm, I'm not familiar at all um, with them or their bikes that I think are interesting enough, at least for me to uh, take a closer look at. So a uh, little tool set, some wrenches, pretty standard. 
Okay, let's see. Um, maybe finish taking some of the zip ties off. Just looking at the frame, kind of got this really interesting, um, like it's not just straight, it's kind of angled, kind of got some dimensional look to it here, I guess, if you will. Uh, and then the top tube here is flat, so the battery sits uh, nicely on the frame there. So that kind of looks cool. And then you have these really nice aerial rider graphics, uh, kind of a goldish color. Looks pretty sharp, I think. Um, so you got aerial rider and the battery up here, and that that might be it. Um, got some gold, the gold graphics here, so that's where it says ride deal. And um, yeah. Uh, Tektro Aries um, disc brakes, very common on uh, affordable e-bikes, but I mean, still they went with a name brand, which I always like to see because they seem to be easier to adjust, at least in my experience. Um, yeah, Jesse, are you going to do a comparison video between this and other approximately $1,000 e-bikes, such as the Roadster V2 and the Hurricane? Yes, that is my intention. Um, I have a lot of videos in the works, but I do want, that is a video that I do want to get done. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about those, but I view, so let's see, the, my thought on that just generally before, I mean, even before I start the video is, if you're looking at, uh, those bikes, the biggest thing to consider is not only the motor, but also the battery. So like, yeah, those stealth e-bikes are super light, but they also have very small batteries. So is it important for you to lift it into an apartment or throw it on a bike rack that you already have? If those things are important or you don't need a lot of range, then I think like the KBO Hurricane or the Roadster V2 are really great options. If you want something with a little bit more substantial battery, then I think you're looking at like this bike, Maybe the Electric XP 2.0, maybe you're looking at the uh, Rad Mission, which I actually just rode this morning. Those are all really great options. Um, this one I think shines and, and we'll see, but I think the motor is going to be the most powerful. We'll see. And also I really like that this has a 14 amp hour battery pack, but of course there's other things to consider too. Like the, the for instance, the Rad Mission, has a smaller battery, 10.5 amp hours, if I'm not mistaken. But the nice thing is like, we already own a rad wagon. So it's nice to have a cross compatible, like we already have a larger battery if we ever need to throw that on the rad mission. So, you know, there's certain situations where you would pick uh, one or the other, um, you know, rad power bikes, of course, is the largest seller of e-bikes in North America. So like, there's a lot of things that should factor into your decision and, and you just need to ultimately um, decide which bike is gonna be best for you. Um, so, uh, and it does say ride deal up here at the top. So that's kind of a, a nice touch. And let's see, maybe since I'm here, I'll install this pedal here. Uh, so let this one, the, the Welgo pedals are very clearly marked to left and right, which is nice. There's a sticker on there, so, so you can't mess that up. The left pedal will thread you to tighten turn left, and the right pedal is normal uh, threaded righty tighty. And you'll need a 15 millimeter wrench right here. Uh, and I usually, I th they felt uh, pretty greased up, but um, you might want to consider putting a little extra grease on there, especially if you're planning to, uh, you know, remove your pedals. It'll make it a whole lot easier. If you're going to put new ones on, I guess, at some point. Get them on there nice and tight, though. And the other, I'm just looking at the, back, the other side of this bike. So it does have a chain guard, which is nice. Keeps the chain, um, you know, from popping off. Keeps your your pants out of the way, so that is a nice touch as well. Again, I when I first saw this bike, I was very surprised at that thousand dollar price point. Just uh, almost hard hard to believe. Um, so that's why I was very excited to to review this one. Just looking at the battery here. Charger port looks on the right.
So it's HL on the top. Well, there's a key. And I thought there might have been a switch on this, but maybe not. So say 48 volt, 14 amp hour. Maybe there's no switch. Shows that the battery's full. We'll have to see if that's the case. I'm not sure if uh, fenders were an option on this bike. We'll have to see. We'll look at the Area Rider website and see if that is something that you can purchase. Uh, let's see. If you're here, let me know. I'm curious uh, what e bikes you already own. What uh, what e bikes are you looking at? I'm just looking at the Aerial Rider website here. Front basket sixty nine dollars. Rear rack sixty nine dollars on back order. The front basket looks like it might be in stock. And then the full fenders are fifty nine dollars. And yeah, so that's fairly reasonable. I would say, of course, you can get uh, third party, uh, certainly uh, fenders and and probably the rear rack as well. I might might dig into that and do some uh, fun reviews on some third party accessories because I do believe there's, you know, you don't always need to buy the products from the actual company. There's a lot of nice third party accessories that still are pretty reasonably priced. Here's the handlebars. Uh, again, brown to match the seat. Definitely a classy kind of looking e bike. And uh, Jesse, let me know if you if that answers your question <laughs> about the thousand uh, dollar e bikes. Uh, even, you know, they have Tektro levers here on the, the bikes. I mean, I've seen, you know, sometimes companies will put just kind of unbranded ones, which are fine, but, you know, certainly save on cost. But it's just really interesting that they, you know, I haven't seen really anything where they have, you know, perhaps cut corners on this bike. Um, yeah, nothing. I, I Maybe... I mean, well, there's a lot of single speeds in this price point. This has a Shimano tourney derailleur. That's on the low end of Shimano's entry level products, but like at least you're getting the gears. So um, I don't know if I, you know, that's kind of to be expected, I guess. And the, oh, no, no LCD display, but again, for a thousand dollars, probably to be expected uh, again. It does have a LED display, and it is a very similar to the one found on the, the Rad Mission, which is kind of interesting. Got keys around your, uh, your uh, handlebars here. I was just looking to see if there's a, a brand on these. Definitely a battery pack that is not, it's not like a re-engine or anything. I mean, obviously it's not integrated into the, um, into the frame. So let's see, we do need to turn the, um, the stem around. And we do need to, let's see. Think. What I need to do is loosen this up, spin that around, because the brake is on, is, the fork is already spun the right way, it's just the stem is, is spun around. So uh, I will do that quickly as I check comments here. All right, um, is it an actual 750 watt motor or is it 750 watt peak? Great question. Um, I believe, I, I'm trying to remember, there was a comment on one of my, um, and it related to speed, that you could get it up over 20 miles per hour, which I obviously test. It says 750 watt motor. I don't know, I mean, I should be able to get a fair idea if it, 
peaks higher than that. And I'll reach out to Aerial Rider and ask if there's any more specs that they can provide on the, the motor. I can look at the back tire here. It just, I mean, I don't think there's any information on here at all about, it just says Aerial Rider. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and say it's, I'm gonna, my best guess right now, 750 watt peak. I might be wrong though. So we'll see. A couple of comments here. Yeah, Jesse says I have a Roadster V2, great speed, but battery life is what you'd expect. Yep. Yeah, the Roadster V2, I mean, great bike, super light. I mean, there's some there's some benefits there for sure. Uh, it just depends what you want, which I feel like I've been saying this a lot, but it's just really awesome that there is really an, an e-bike um, for anyone. I mean, any price point, pretty much. I mean, towards the lower end, it gets a little bit um, more difficult. But as far as specs go, I mean, if, if you have at least $1,000 to spend on any e-bike, you get on, you know, you'll be able to find one, first of all, uh, well, maybe not in stock, but you'll be able to find something that will meet your needs. It just might not ship out right away. And then the other thing is if you, you know, if you are looking at an e-bike, you can just, you can get a folding bike, you can get a fat tire bike, you can buy a moped style electric bike. Literally anything that you want uh, is available. So uh, really, really great. Uh, time to be shopping for e-bikes, especially these days with so many options. Um, I've actually been working on a blog post talking about kind of my tips for people who are um, purchasing an e-bike for the first time, and that was the one of the things that I, I talked about. And I also kind of mentioned, you know, if you're looking at buying an e-bike at a bike store, you know, not that that's a bad thing because you get some great personalized service and all those sort of things, but if you just do that and don't look at what's available online, you're just missing out on a huge amount of, of electric bikes um, on the market. So, uh, let's see here. Cable management wise, I'm guessing, there we go, like this. So, probably some improvements that I can make here to cable management, I'm just making sure that nothing is kind of twisted. Uh, let's see, I think I'm gonna go with that. Looks like cable's coming in on the left and right. Um, some cable's coming in underneath the down tube. Uh, if you saw my recent video, if you kind of follow other videos I did, you, you may have seen my brother's cable management on his, uh, Rad Wagon 4, which I think is looks very clean and, and quite impressive. So he's definitely spent a lot of time making it look nice. But there's uh, just some products you can get on Amazon that wrap your cables. Some companies include it. Um, you know, these are just zip tied together, which, which is fine. I mean, nothing wrong with that. But you can make them look a little cleaner if you choose. Um, and if you're wondering why I'm not using the... Uh, Tools included. Uh, I just find that using um, the high quality, higher quality tools just saves lots of headaches down the road. Make sure you don't strip anything out. It's just a little bit easier if you're using the cheaper type of Allen wrenches, which pretty much every uh, company includes. And in fact, I'm, another post I'm working on is kind of the tools that I uh, use for for e-bike, so that'll be coming up in probably a video, but that'll be uh, down the road. Got plenty of videos in the works. And this is just a, a little mini ratchet from Top Eek, uh, Pro Bike Tool sells one as well that I've also used. This was just the one that I happened to find in my garage first. these out. The 
focused on tools. I was trying to kind of think of things you might want to potentially upgrade on this bike and maybe the pedals, but those are fine. The seat really looks nice with the grips. So unless you really want a plush seat. Um, definitely add some handlebar mount or a, mounted for, or a, a mount for your cell phone on your handlebars. Maybe a top tube bag. Maybe some fenders. It's just kind of crazy for a thousand bucks what you can get. It does look like there is a, uh, a button here for the throttle to turn the throttle on and off. That was something that the uh, older models of Rad Power Bikes had. It's kind of interesting that's on this bike. And not that, I mean, it's kind of a nice safety feature to actually have, but um, I'm sure some people would prefer not to oops, uh, have it on. Is a red button. So right hand twist grip throttle and kind of as I've been riding you know, pretty significantly with a number of e-bikes I've kind of found that I I do prefer the twist grip throttles. It just seems a little bit easier. Some of those thumb throttles if you're using especially if you're using them uh, significantly are uh, pretty you know your hands your thumb just gets, gets tired that's just uh, the reality. You got the thumb shifter up here. The grips are branded, Aerial Rider. And Aerial Rider is one of the companies that seems to do a few extra touches around their bike. I mentioned the seat earlier, grips. So now I've reviewed the X class last year, the D class, which we still have in our garage. I sold the X class a couple weeks ago, maybe. And so our moped style electric bike of choice is now the D class. And I did a accessories video on that, kind of getting it set up for us. So for the foreseeable future, that is a bike we will be using it. My wife and I like to ride it together when we get an opportunity. Just a blast ride. I mean, even the, even the uh, display here, or the LED display, is even branded like Aerial Rider, like very small, but. Um... The uh, handlebars are something I typically adjust again after I get on the bike. And I'll check for comments shortly as soon as I finish this so if you have any other questions I'm trying to think what else obviously no no suspension up front rigid fork again I had this price point it's just tricky because if there if there happened to be a suspension fork you know it probably just wouldn't be that great uh, of a suspension fork and then maybe, you know, just wouldn't last or work very well and then it just adds weight to your bike, so. Even an integrated bell here on the left. Nice. Okay, we're gonna go with that for now. Tighten those up. And I, I should note that I am not a bike mechanic. Uh, I just put together an e-bike, so, um, you know, take, uh, this is not an assembly video by any means. Uh, looks like 180 millimeter discs there. All right, here we go, let's see. 
I saw on the site I had to buy it with PayPal. Is that true? I guess I need to set up a PayPal account because I want to order mine this weekend. Uh, that is not something that I was aware of. You could be right. Let's see. Um, you can use Google Pay. Shipping address, continue to shipping. I guess I'll, let me just see. I have no idea if I will be able to see uh, if there's any other ways to pay. But. Shipping method, continue payment, calculating taxes. Um, you can use a credit card, um, fill up. You can use a credit card. I'm on my screen shows credit card, PayPal, or Affirm, which is the financing uh, solution over time. All right, Philip says that the peak is 1200 watts. So uh, I will confirm that, but uh, that could very well be the case, as I have not explored that. Here's the front wheel skewer attached um, to the spokes. Schrader valves, so you don't need a special pump. Some, sometimes these discs can be a little bit uh, tricky to get out, especially if they kind of get jammed in there and shipping. Tectro rotors, and we'll get this on. Kind of interesting, it's a, a very short uh, front skewer. It's interesting. And it looks like I do need to, let's see if these bolts are loose. Yep, loose enough for me to say put this, um, I don't know, protector, fork protector to keep the fork from hopefully not getting damaged. This part of this is just getting it in between the brakes. There we go. Yeah, these are, uh, I don't know, uh, some, they're not like so. Street tires, they have a little bit of tread on them. I think you could probably take them, you know, light off-roading, maybe some uh, crushed gravel or, or something. Obviously, you'll feel a bunch of bumps, but... Get this tightened down. Brakes are something that uh, 
likely are something that needs to be adjusted after you ride it. I like to not do it right away, kind of try to work the pads in a little bit before I make any major adjustments. I'm just trying to get this front skewer. That seems like it's good. And let's see, maybe, maybe I'll install the front light and try to power the bike on. Yeah, Jesse says you can use a credit card to pay. But I see, I mean, there's just a complete credit card uh, option there. So let's see, should we turn on the front light? Get the front light installed? So if this is indeed a 1200 watt peak motor, that's uh, might be the m one of the most uh, powerful e-bikes that you can get for the price. We'll see if they, let's see. Um, actually, I wonder. Just looking at this. Looks like there's a stopper on this bolt, so I wonder if I can even, because I wouldn't be able to tighten this. Uh, I mean, that's. So I feel like what you might need to do, these extra screws came with the bike. And of course, I didn't look at the assembly video. <laughs> Okay, let's try this. See if this is the right size. No. Yeah, so you might have to wait on the front light. I guess I can just plug it in and see if I can turn it on, but. bike powers on there we go four batteries four bars what if I don't have this the rear lights on doesn't look like it goes brighter when you hit the and there's the front light looks like I didn't maybe have it so that's actually uh, fairly decent probably hard to see on camera but uh, definitely something that's like great for at night so people can see you, um, but probably not something that you want to use solely at night. Typically what I recommend is buying a light for your handlebars and then just one, uh, one, uh, one push on the power to turn the bike off. Uh, just looking for other things, bottle cage bosses here, maybe going to be able to fit a bottle, a shorter bottle here. Uh, battery's going to come off that way. It doesn't come off as, at an angle and there's room here, so maybe, okay, we'll see about that. I'm just looking to make sure there's nothing else I missed. It says, a, it says it's a class 2 electric bike um, right there, so that should be 20 miles per hour. Um, we'll obviously see. And they do have uh, some metal pieces coming out from the frame to kind of cradle the uh, controller. So, yeah, overall looks looks great. Um, I think that pretty much wraps up my thoughts, at least so far. If you have any other questions, let me know quickly uh, if you're watching this live, and I'll be sure to answer them. Um, before I go, again, if you're looking to purchase one of these, please consider using or any of the other uh, aerial rider uh, e-bikes, please consider using the link in the description before you purchase because it helps us out uh, reviewing more e-bikes and keeps me making content like the review I'll eventually uh, do on this bike as well. And I'll also have a link to our e-bike accessories list and our top e-bike brands page. Of course, aerial rider is on there. Um, 
because I am a big fan of what Arda and his brother are doing with the company. And uh, yeah, they've, I've been very pleased with what I've seen. Um, you know, not just with my experience, but but others as well. They obviously have the the Grizzly on the uh, the higher end of things, dual battery, dual motor, which now comes with two 1,000 watt motors, which I think peak much higher than that. So Aerial Rider definitely has a wide variety of uh, electric bikes from, you know, $1,000 to, I believe the Grizzly is somewhere around uh, $3,000 rather. So um, yeah, great company. And uh, I'm really excited to take this for a test drive. And yeah, with that, I think I'm gonna wrap it up, guys. Thanks for watching me unbox the Aerial Rider Rideal. Uh, was going to put it together anyway. Thought I would do it live, even though it's middle of the day on a uh, Tuesday uh, here. So more content coming on this bike, more content coming on some other e-bikes. I mentioned the electric bike. I still have a fat tire e-bike that I need to review. So lots of things that I'm working on. So other information can be found on my website, ebikeescape.com. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for watching it. If you're watching the rerun or, or the playback uh, rather. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next uh, video. See you, Jesse. Thanks for joining. Um, thanks, Prakash, Prakash, Raul, Go Bike, Levon Jones. Um, Prakash asked where you can buy extra batteries. Uh, if you can't find them on the Aerial Rider website, um, I'd reach out to them. Um, they should be on their, their accessories page. They have a specific accessories page for each brand. I'm just looking to see if they have. I don't see batteries listed, so reach out to them. I'm sure they will be happy to answer your question about getting extra batteries. All right, thanks. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next video.